car, which we reckon is the best in the world. But we're determined to show that electric cars are here to stay. And we're going to prove it by driving it down the Pan American Highway. It's a prototype, so there are no guarantees that it will last the course. And I'm filming them all the way so that you can join us on our electric adventure. We're here at the University Politecnico to fix the car. Oh, we don't know what's going on. We never give up. Viva Colombia! Okay. Seeing this country on a beautiful day, lakes, mountains, it's stunning. Right, I'm um, worried about whether we can we can actually make it. Yeah, just arrived in Bogota. Sebastian uh, is sorting us out. We got some guy waiting in, uh, in Ecuador side. Make the guys with the guns your friends. It is insane. The SR Zero has travelled over 16,000 kilometers, with another 10,000 to go. But first, there's time for a diversion. We're here in Ecuador, Ibarra, and I'm taking the guys for a spin in the racetrack. This is one of the best racetracks in the region, and we could really test the performance of the car today. Well, Sebastian emailed uh, me, actually, about a month, month and a half ago, um, and just offered his help, and Nick called him up, and they got talking. We met him up in Bogota, and he's just the coolest guy. Helps us out so much with so many things, and you know, we'll become friends now, so that's great. Beautiful sunny day, a racetrack to ourselves in an electric radical. It's very good, it's very, very good. It's so exciting to see this car here. Never ever before we had an electric car in this part of the world on a racetrack. So it's really exciting. Can't wait. Awesome. Highly car on a racetrack. Look at the green on his face. Look at the green. I've got a green as long as the Pan American Highway. This is a, a massive test for the car. It's a really high performance, very fast, lots of turns, and you could really get a feel for the car. And you know, I guess it's the first time we're gonna actually be able to push the car a little bit to the limits, and, and I'll tell you guys what it feels like to drive an electric car on a proper racer. In the right hands, the SR0 can reach speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour, even without a gearbox, and cornering at these speeds is not for amateurs. God, that nothing was wrong, really. Didn't want to break anything. Whoops! It's a race car, but we have to be careful because we have to get to Oshawaya. And yeah, um, I feel really bad actually because you know, it could have jeopardized, jeopardized the, the, uh, the mission. Now, Sebastian, Formula 3 driver, is going to show us how it's done. And uh, I managed to get in there with shotgun to ride co pilot with him. So right. I'm really looking forward to do this. Let's go. I'm show taking us how Andy, it's done. so. I'm actually much more calm than when I used to get in a race car because there's no sound. Some, somehow, you know, a high revving engine makes your heart beat faster, but here I feel very relaxed and very focused. It's amazing, it's amazing. No noise whatsoever and we're still going so fast, so fast. I could just hear the wind, hear my helmet, and I could hear what each one of the tires was doing at each one of the corners, which never happened before. This is like having a microphone on each tire and knowing what the car is doing on each corner. So it's really amazing. I mean, no complaints, really. I mean, this is, I feel so lucky. I would love to race uh, electric cars. I mean, it would be something amazing, amazing. Every time in life when we come to something new, it seems weird, but then after a few years, it's normal. So I think we're all gonna be racing uh, electric cars in the next years, no problem. Back on the road, the team have a short leg from Ibarra to Quito, where they spend a day giving a presentation. Then it's a long trek to Machala for an overnight, leaving plenty of time the next day for the border crossing into Peru. We're 
and it's going so well. I'm, I'm kind of superstitious as well, you know, what's going wrong next? And so touch wood that it's continuing like this. Yeah. Tomorrow they're booked to give a presentation at a university. But the next morning, the team is regretting the night before. Very big crowd, very excited today. Um, but to be honest, I need some coffee because I'm struggling. As you can tell, the faces of everybody, everybody looks really tired. It's not so, because we went out last night. It's not because we went out, yeah. I wanted to make clear. <laughs> look, 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 film his drink. They're just shaking. Yeah. <laughs> it, takes, it takes some effort today to carry the coffee. A lot of people thought electric cars were slow, they were boring, they were unattractive, and we wanted to prove them wrong. Despite the late night, the presentation was going down well. It has amazed us how well the car has survived. They want to see their car go like back and forth. Demonstrating the car hadn't been in the plans, but no one wants to disappoint an enthusiastic audience. Really cool. <laughs> totally unexpected, you know, as usual. <laughs> On the car. No worries. No worries, no worries. We can get the parts. I was standing right in front of the car when, when he was driving really fast. And with the last one, I just jumped out because I saw the car coming really fast towards me could have been badly injured. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the worst has happened. I mean... Hopefully the electrical system is still intact. Um, front left wheel suspension that's worrying me at the moment. I'm actually angry about this because it was stupid showing off. I think this is this is probably the biggest shock of my life. It's the biggest mistake in my life. <laughs> Go and make a list, and then we get um, Radical in Nevada, and we get Sebastian to report it. Things happen. The only thing you can do about now is get it repaired and uh, look into the future. It's gonna work, but we'll fix it. We'll fix it. We will succeed. Our spirit is nothing is impossible, and we fix it, and and we be on the on the road again. As easy as that. It's two days since the accident in Quito, and already things are looking up. With Sebastian's help, Team Racing Green are learning how things get fixed the Ecuadorian way. This is Victor here. He is the guy who's repairing the whole fiberglass nose. He's the guy making the magic happen. We called up the university. We made the woman who sweeps up all the rubbish go and find the fiberglass pieces. And somehow he's, he's taken them and like a puzzle, he's putting it back together. I don't know how he's doing it. It's very, very impressive. Ahora falta darle un poco más de acabado un día más. Y ya sale todo completo. Todo bien. Todo bien. Ah. So I think we give it another 24 hours and uh, be even better. No, no hay nada. No. You, you, know. you guys didn't save the broken pieces? No. Let me introduce as well to Alfonso here. He's, he's a radical owner here in uh, Quito. He's been helping us out a lot. His car will provide some parts which can't be fixed. We have good craftsmanship and um, good people that are willing to help and we'll get the guys on the road again, don't worry. But there's still a lot to sort out. This crumpled mess used to be a crash box. Um, we think we could fix it fairly well by cutting it off behind the damaged components, so basically along this line. It's certainly not an easy fix, but uh, I think we could come up with something half decent. We're here in uh, Alfonso's brother-in-law's really cool workshop here. It's coming back together and uh, feels feels quite good. So to actually have it done here in the middle of, you know, Quito, Ecuador, you know, some may not think the most advanced of countries, but they know how to fix things here. 
we're pretty far away from the factories and sometimes parts are very difficult for us to get. We have to fix parts here. Uh, so that's actually a very important lesson that we've learned because our immediate reaction was like, let's call that Radical, let's get a new nose cone in. But their immediate reaction was, oh, we just fix it. We're lucky that there's lots of people like the fiberglass guy, Victor, who's helping us out. It should be completely done by tomorrow. And we get this crash box fixed in the next day or so, then we are done, like done. The car looks perfect, yeah. Better than new. <laughs> looks like it fits. It's an incredible job that they've done. We've had so many people rally around and help us. We're just indebted to Ecuador, I think. We have the new crash box in. This was something which was done by a metal worker. And you cannot tell that this is cut here. And this whole section is new. You wouldn't be able to tell. And then, of course, we have the front splitter, which is this thing. And it is pretty much as new. And really, all we need to do now is whip on the bodywork, tighten up some bolts, and we're good to go. The next morning is a cold and early start. But less than six days after disaster, the project is back on course. Sebastian has returned to Colombia for a few days, but to help things go smoothly, he's left a network of Racing Green supporters along the route. Today we're going to Machala, um, which is about 320 miles south, which is right on the limit of our range normally. So we're going to stop for a quick charge along the way. Um, that helps us actually gain two days with the schedule um, ahead. That takes us within 70 kilometers of the border, and then tomorrow we cross into Peru. Back in the rhythm of the road, the team have plenty of time to reflect on the lessons of the past week. Yeah, last week was really a life-changing experience. 